Good morning, fasting friends. So I have officially broken my fast that I was on, and I'm going to take a time to explain in this video knowing when to break your prolonged fast. So first, I want to share my experience so you guys can know kind of what happened when I did mine. So prior to this fast, I have only ever done 48s. So this was my first ever shot at a 72, and I had every intention of getting all the way to 72 hours. But like I talked about in the class we had, you have to have the ability to listen to your body. And if you start having signs and symptoms that something is not okay, you need to give yourself the right and freedom to change the plan and do what's best for your health. So last night um, I was waking up. I probably woke up about 10 times and each time I was having just really bad burning in my stomach, like such severe hunger pains. I'm thinking I have never been this hungry in my life. And it followed by about 4.30, I woke up and I started feeling really nauseous. And I thought, boy, this is not fun. But still at this point, I was not like ready to just get up out of bed at 4.30 a.m. and start eating. So I kept hanging on and then followed the shakes. I started getting shakes pretty bad. And so at that point I thought, okay, I need at least salt. So I got up and I drank my snake juice, just a couple of sips to try to settle things and let everything, you know, get back to normal. But unfortunately that didn't happen. Um, I ended up having to sprint to the bathroom and I threw up a whole lot. So at that point I was absolutely certain that my body was absolutely done with this fast and it was time for me to reintroduce food. So my body was obviously at this crisis mode and it was telling me, hey, this is not okay any longer. You've went too far. You've pushed beyond where you should go. And it's very important that you now break your fast. So I went ahead and I followed through and I began first with bone broth and I sipped on it very slowly and I waited for over a half an hour after I had had my bone broth to introduce any actual food. And I sat there and I really thought, because it's so important to like, listen to your body, what are you really craving? And now if your body's craving something that's a junk food, you do not need to listen to that craving. But more than often, if you really get in touch with your body, you're going to realize your body's going to crave something in particular. Well, my body was really strongly craving just plain Greek yogurt. And so um, my son ran over to the store for me and got some this morning. And I have never had a food experience like I had today. I... I took a bite of that yogurt and I closed my eyes and just instantly I had a smile come on my face and followed immediately by something that shocked me. I just had tears roll down. Like I have never, I think this is truly and by far the most hungry my body's ever been. And boy, does it really put in perspective how much we don't realize how, how strong, um, you know, people have to deal with these things that are going through starvation in, you know, in countries where they don't have meals every day and how we have just this overabundance of food at our fingertips. And it really made me just um, more compassionate and just more aware, you know, we don't need to overindulge, but just being able to have food and realize like the beauty of fueling your body when it really needs it was amazing. So that was my experience. Um, so moving forward, I want to talk about what is normal while you're fasting because fasting can come with symptoms. So I'm going to talk about normal symptoms. These aren't pleasant, but they're normal. So if you have one of these, it's not something to alarm you. So number one, um, lightheadedness. Your body's adjusting to the fact that you don't have insulin coming in. So it's kind of going to be going like this with your insulin for a little while, just trying to figure out what's going on. Um, the second thing is headaches. Headaches are a sign of two things, either food addiction or your body detoxing because when we have that flood of all of the toxins that are coming when we have our fat being used as fuel a lot of detoxification is happening and just the overabundance of toxins within the bloodstream can cause a headache so that's not something to stop your fast but just increase your snake juice and it should really help to minimize that and using essential oils will help as well um, constipation or diarrhea people get one or both and it's for various reasons. The constipation is often because, well, you haven't had food coming in, so your body doesn't need to eliminate because there's no input. Um, the other reason why people might get diarrhea is, again, that's a detox symptom. So if you're in, if you're not yet in ketosis and you get diarrhea, it's because you're detoxing. If you're not in ketosis and you get constipation, it's probably because you're dehydrated a little bit. So up your snake juice. Um, the next one is cramps. 
So if you get muscle cramps at all, that's a sign of a drop in your potassium or your magnesium. So you want to make sure, again, up your snake juice. And then the last one is irritability and strong emotions. This is very common. And again, this is because we have food addictions. We are so used to having food anytime we want it, anytime. And when we, when we say, nope, we're done, our body kind of it throws a fit more or less. And, and there's a very deep connection we often have with food. So getting it back in perspective and realizing food is fuel and what I put into my body really matters. So I need to choose quality foods. So having that irritability and emotional, you know, struggle, that's normal. It's just part of letting go of these addictions and these, you know, things you've been doing for so long. So let's talk about what's not normal. If you have one of the following things happen, it is an indication to your body that it's saying it's time to break your fast. This is no longer safe or okay. Um, number one, fainting or passing out. Your body is at a critical level if you're doing either of those. Number two, vomiting while you're in ketosis. Now, if you're not yet in ketosis and you're vomiting, that's a sign of a food addiction, more, most often a sugar addiction. So, don't quit your fast if you're vomiting and you're not yet in ketosis. Your body is just full on detoxing. And I realize it's hard, but that's a healing crisis. And you're going to have to walk through that before you can come out on the other side feeling way better. But if you're in ketosis, which when this morning when I tested, I was at 180. So I was really deep in ketosis and I'm puking. So I knew my body was like, hey, feed me. It's time. Um, if you have body shakes, if you have severe stomach pain, that's like a burning feeling. And that was another thing that came on to me almost immediately before the puking happened. I started having really bad burning in my stomach. Um, if you have heart pain, like, or chest pain that comes with like palpitations, that's another sign. Your body is very low in nutrition and it needs to be fed. So those are all reasons that are good and, and notable to break your fast with. If you don't have that going on and you're just dealing with one of the normal things, press on and you can do it. So if you have any questions about this or any, just let me know whatever your questions are and I'd be happy to answer them. Um, you can post them in the comments. If you haven't already, please like my channel and subscribe to it um, so I can keep making some awesome videos for you guys. Thanks for sharing this experience with me. Have a great day.